So this time, one day later from the last team battle that was just uploaded today, we have a 3v3 team battle of unknown rules and specifications to me, which is between um, us, Heaven's Breaker, and FBK. And it's starting off, it's what? It's 3v3 round out, double mulligan, clan diversity. Uh First is Overdrive, who's using Messiah for reasons. Going up against... I have never known how to say that name. Pascal? Pascal? You see why I have difficulty with it? Yes. Pascaliano, who's using um, Great Nature. Huh. When I don't know how to say a name, I make shit up. Pascal, Pascal, so <laughs> you can't even say it straight. Pascal, so I've honestly never seen Overdrive use Messiahs before. Um, I wouldn't know what he does. Anyway, Pass starts by use by riding a raccoon. A raccoon without rockets. Wow. Meanwhile, Overdrive goes perfect guard. If I don't say much, it's because I'm eating ham. Yeah, he's eating food. I'm specifically eating ham. Only ham? No other food or drink or anything? I already ate the other part that was with it, so now I'm just eating ham. Okay. That's a binoculars tiger. Yes, yeah, so if he calls a rear, he has the ability to give it 4,000 power, but retire at the end of the turn. Because this is in the because this is G uh, format, there probably isn't a lot he'll be able to get out of it. But a duck bill usually changes something like that. It's basically a tool to make to allow him to be aggressive because he doesn't actually gain more advantage from this. Yeah. He just now allows himself to be more aggressive without losing a ton of hand early on. Which is fine because he's up against Messiah and they can't really get anything started until their first stride. I actually remember on Car Fight Online, once I was fighting someone who was using Messiah. And of course, because of the way the beta was, their, their Messiah was literally the trial deck and two promo cards. One promo card that on ride automatically lets you lock a great, lock one of the opponent's units. And I think it did something else, I don't know. And also the Death Metal Chameleon, which, you know, that that's important for obvious reasons. And I forgot yeah. to do something. So I'll be pausing the recording for a moment. The recording is back. I was unavailable on Skype, so the bottom of the screen was probably showing Skype notifications. Had to stop that. Derp. It's because I changed my recording setup. Um, behind the scenes work of what I usually do when it comes to recordings. What I usually do is I hide the taskbar because when I use the computer normally I have it showing because I don't care. Yeah. 
that way I can get the full screen of the vid of the video without caring. And because I have the taskbar hidden, I have to put myself on do not disturb so it doesn't constantly pop up. I decided instead to just screw hiding the taskbar and just uh, record around it. Which means the very bottom of the screen which would show pretty much nothing of interest isn't being shown. But in return, I don't have to worry about the taskbar. And because I don't have to worry about the taskbar, sometimes I forget to put myself off of available. But Skype notifications still appear, which is an issue. Yeah. So, a usual first turn Messiah stride, Blizzard. And Neon Messiah. I wouldn't I wouldn't call that the standard because there are other things you can do instead. There are technically better things you can do instead. But if you want to turbo the generation break two, it's the best thing that you can do. Of course if you do turbo the generation break two, good luck getting the soul to uh maintain. Also, I have to ask, why in the hell is that crit there other than to be a lock? Um, because, um, if Overdrive didn't call anything else, he wouldn't be able to do Alter Ego's on stride skill of... Like I said, to be a lock. But yeah. why um. didn't he pick something else? Why didn't he pick anything that wasn't a 10k shield? Oh... Well, in his triple drive, I saw a few Star Vaders, grade 3s. He has Star Vaders in this? Yeah, he has. I saw a Venom Dancer. Oh, he's doing that. That, oh. Some people I like to, think... some people like to do that. I personally, I personally don't think it's a good idea. Venom Dancer just doesn't work with this deck because it's... If you're doing it the way that it's meant to be done, then you're unlocking a lot of things. So you're not going to have locks for that turn. Not to mention that Messiah just doesn't really have the ability to Omega Lock anyway. So what's going to be locked when you ride the when you ride that unit? I mean, you can Nebula Crunch, but Messiah has so better uh, G-Zone options now. Yeah, usually I see people run Messiahs with um, Dark Zodiac. Either Dark Zodiac or... Uh, what the fuck is that other guy called? Blaster Joker. No. I mean, I've seen like one or two people do that, but that's different. Um, it was the other one that Nebula... No. Shit. Yeah, it's Zodiac... Venom Dance for Blaster The Trial Deck guy. The Trial Deck Dragon. Garnet Star. That was oh, it. Yeah. That was it. Because Garnet Star is really, really non intrusive. Well, this is an, this is intrusive. What the fuck did he lock? Oh, he didn't do that skill. No, he didn't do it. Then what the hell was. Okay. He really I'm should have shocked. used that to lock one of his own units instead of his his opponents, but it doesn't matter because Exilus is gonna retire the retire units on the opponent's side based on what's locked unlocked anyway. If I was him, I would take I would probably take out Duckbill too, just because having that imp, having that zone locked really doesn't mean much to Great Nature, and it would be another retire. This is too critical. It was only twenty six. Yeah. It was only twenty six k because, you know, it could have been. It could have been more if things were done differently, but uh, he didn't do those different things. One thing I'm gonna say right now though is I really, really 
really don't like Exilus Messiah. Not because of what it does, but because of what it represents as a card to the actual card game. It is literally a generation rare that you cannot use in a deck unless you have at least two copies of a different generation rare. That's a fucking problem. Do you Your observation skills astound me. You didn't even realize that before, did you? Nope. I knew um, that Alexis Messiah was a generation rare. I totally forgot Amnesty was too. Yes, Amnesty Messiah is also a generation rare. So it is a generation rare that you cannot use unless you have a generation rare. And two of them. Because you cannot use its ability unless you already have a face-up ge- uh, uh, Amnesty. I think right now Amnesty is really high in price. No, Amnesty and no, the the alt, the Messiah deck in general is the most expensive deck in the game because it requires two generation rares to work. Liter that's the other problem with this deck in general for real life use is that it requires Exilus and alter it requires Exilus and Amnesty in order to function because no other Link Joker strides work with what Alter Ego Messiah wants to do. Yeah. And I am surprised that Overdrive, no guarded, but he didn't get, uh... Well, in this particular situation, if he doesn't have a perfect guard, he'd have to drop a lot of hand in order to not, in order to guard. And because of what he's up against, he has to realize that every time he does, he decides to do that, it makes guarding the rears more difficult. So you have to take that into account. See, if you don't have a perfect guard, you have to kind of pick and choose what to block when it comes to the great nature. And no matter how many criticals they run, usually it might just be better to take the vanguard and prepare to block the rears because they're going to be more difficult to block anyway. Also, keeping in mind that Crayon Tiger will stand something and make it even stronger. So if they decide, I'm going to attack with vanguard first. They can give the critical to the rear guard and then pull a title assault only stronger because instead of getting weaker on the restand, it gets stronger. Yeah. <coughs> also, I want to keep it. I want to keep in mind that after the tw after the triple drive, uh, he had like four cards in hand. Now he has eight. This is what this deck does. Somebody somebody asked for Great Natures to do that. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they kind of need it, but still, someone asked for this. Who asked for this? Christopher Lowe did. Just because he's got so much um, pull in the Vanguard community does not fucking mean... Okay, so <laughs> he's going to lock that... He's going to lock that, and then uh, Sacrifice locks itself, and by locking itself, he gets to counter charge one, and he also gives the Vanguard 3,000 power. He could have also given it to Lady Gunner, but that wouldn't change anything. Giving it to Vanguard doesn't change anything either, but between the two options, it's, it's something to do. That Lady Gunner is not... Okay. No, he he accidentally rested the locked unit instead when he tried to unlock it. There's Venom Dancer. There's a little Lady Gunner. That's a heal. Well, the heal was necessary, but everything else was a grade three, so he needs perfect guards in hand if he wants to guard next turn. Or you could just hope that there is no next turn. That's a, that's a possibility. Yep. The, the other side is going to hit for 27,000 thanks to Trigger. 
So we we'll to see if that will mean anything in the grand scheme of things. I will say that Overdrive does have good columns in this section. In this situation, I mean to say. But it all depends on if Great Nature can guard and cannot. Overdrive wins this. I honestly think he would have been okay for the turn after because that one front because that crayon tiger is still locked so he would have had at most two attacks but luckily it wouldn't it, it's not coming down to that because great nature can pull some really dumb shit if you give them a chance on to the next game